here in Greece, in Hermosa, in Bataan. We begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The face of God is mercy, and mercy is presence. He gives to us His only Son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord Jesus Christ gave His life for us. God is mercy, and His mercy is His love and forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, we are being called to be the face of God, to be the hands of God, to be the hearts of God. And that is, we have to be mercy in action, mercy visible and tangible to our people. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly seen in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come to our help with mighty strength, that what our sins impede, the grace of your mercy may hasten. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. On that day, they will sing this song in the land of Judah. A strong city have we. He set up walls and ramparts to protect us. Open up the gates to let in a nation that is just one that keeps faith. A nation of firm purpose you keep in peace in peace for its trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. He humbles those in high places, and lofty city he brings down. He tumbles it to the ground, levels it with the dust. It is trampled underfoot by the needy, by footsteps of the poor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This gate is the Lord's that shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant pros pros prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is God. And he, and he has given us light. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of the Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had not been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built this house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. Our beloved and my brothers in the priesthood, Father Anthony Sibug, our rector of this diocesan shrine of St. John Paul II, Father Prost Tenorio, the executive secretary of Divine Mercy Asia, Sister St. John Luarte, Divine Mercy Asia Lake Coordinator, our devotees and disciples who are now watching us with this live streaming. My beloved parishioners of our diocesan shrine of St. John Paul II, the Pious Pastor Council, headed by Mom Vilma Gonzalez, my brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for your participations and your gracious presence with our Holy Mass. And let us be thankful to the lay faithful of this diocesan shrine 
of St. John Paul II here in Kulis. And because of you, we have this live streaming for Asia. My dear devotees and disciples of Divine Mercy, have you asked yourselves, on this very difficult and devastating time of COVID-19 pandemic and with all the calamities which are happening and we are experiencing what we must do. What are we going to tell to our people as we are gathered together for this divine mercy live streaming Holy Mass for Asia? Let us remind them who St. Faustina was for us, especially with what we are now experiencing. During her time, St. Faustina endured hardship and even misunderstood. She was blamed and falsely accused. Yes, and yet she persevered. Her faith was unwavering. Her love for Jesus was strong and undiminished. She lived up to his mercy. Now in these troubling and trying times of COVID-19 pandemic and with the calamities around us, Saint Faustina is giving us her examples which we must follow. These are also what we must share to our people. And what are these? First, be resilient. Second, be courageous. And lastly, be steadfast with your faith. Be resilient, be courageous, be steadfast. First, Jesus is always telling us, it is I, do not be afraid. John chapter 6, verse 20. The early life of Sister Faustina was of simplicity and of sacrifices. They were poor and the social condition at that time was severe and difficult. She worked hard, even as housemaid. Yet, the young Faustina baptized at the time Helen experienced pain and suffering, yet she was firm and resilient with her Catholic faith, reaffirming her conviction. She said, I will go and serve God because that is what I am resolved to do since my childhood and that. I will do. I repeat, I will go and serve God because that is what I am resolved to do since my childhood and that I will do. With the distractions and famine brought about by the horrors of the First World War, the Kowaska family was in poverty and destitute, yet they remained united and strong with their faith in God. In her needs and with uncertain times, Sister Faustina did not lose sight of God, reassuring herself, I had to do and I had to fulfill my duty towards God. I had to do and fulfill my duty toward God. During her religious formation, it was indeed 
a way of the cross. She was also misunderstood and even ridiculed. Some were indifferent to her, suspicious of her words and her actions, according to them, just on illusions. But Saint Faustina remained patient with them, prayerful, and even so was very penitent. In her great sufferings, she called and hold on to God, alone to God. She prayed consistently and constantly. She said, sinasabi niya, Help me, O Lord, that my hands may be merciful and filled with good deeds, so that I may do only good to my neighbors and take upon myself the more difficult and toilsome tasks. Help me that my faith be merciful so that I may hurry to assess my neighbor and overcoming my own fatigue and weariness. My true rest is in the service of my neighbor. My true rest is in the service of my neighbor. Diary 163. Diary 163. Days before her death, Saint Faustina was asked, Are you not afraid of death? She replied, Why? And she continued, All my sin and my impurities will be consumed like a straw in the fire of divine mercy. She was not afraid of anything and of anyone. It is because of her complete faith to Jesus, unwavering fidelity to divine mercy. When you are afraid, when you are burdened, repeat, always repeat in yourself, in your mind, in your heart, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. My brothers and sisters, there are calamities. It is still COVID-19 pandemic and there are even some variants. Yet, we should not be afraid. Let us all be strong and resilient. Why? It is because of Jesus whom we have to turn to and trust. Jesus, I trust in you. When we are burdened by lockdown or quarantine, threatened by losing our jobs or closing down factories, don't be discouraged. Look up to God. Always bear in mind our hope and our help is in God's mercy. And we beg of him, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Luke chapter 18, verse 38. We beg of God, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. An overseas Filipino worker returns to her previous employer in Como in Milan, in Italy. She was asked, what do you feel? She replied, I'm very nervous and so afraid. 
I think much of my children, but I will do and ready for anything for their own good, for their future. How are they? Her co-worker in the chaplaincy wanted to know. Rosalinda, the overseas Filipina worker, said, I left them to my mother. I told them to be obedient, to study hard, even from home, and always pray. I asked them, together with their Lola grandmother, whenever they are, to pray the three o'clock habit, especially again searching COVID-19 pandemic in our province and with our difficulties in economics. She added, and in my time, I also recite the Divine Mercy Chaplet to be with them in spirit. This gives me strength and assurance of their safety. I entrust myself. I entrust them to Divine Mercy. My brothers and sisters, my devotees and disciples of Divine Mercy, like Saint Faustina, be resilient. Second, Jesus is reminding us, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus wants us to be safe and strong, and he does everything to save us. Jesus gives us life. He sustains and supports us. In spite of inner conflict, fear, and being frightened because of God's immense works for her, Saint Pausina professed to Jesus, I am ready for every beck and call of your will. I am ready for every beck and call of your will. Diary, diary, four, three, nine. Four, three, nine. Diary, I am ready in spite of works, in spite of anxieties and worries, in spite of pains and problems, I am ready at your back and call to do your will. She submitted completely her will at the service of Jesus. She spent her time in prayers, fulfilling faithfully her convent duties. And she was very much contented with her life her oneness with Jesus affirming from her diary 609. Diary 609. You write it in your notebook. Diary 609. That God grants everything that we ask of Him with trust. Beautiful, isn't it? God grants everything that we ask of him with us. Diary 609. Take courage, my brothers and sisters. God is with us. God will never fail us. He will never abandon us. With God, we will surpass all this. We will be saved and all of us will be saved. Our God is almighty. He makes everything possible. God is still in control. Just trust him 
And he is always assuring us, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Matthew chapter 14, verse 27. Our society offers instant fame and beauty. Some of our people entice us with false adulation, fake news, and empty promises. They prompt us to be powerful and to be popular. But all of this would never guarantee a meaningful and fulfilled life. COVID-19 has shown us that all this will pass away. Let us not forget that only God is eternal. Only God is absolute. Only God matters. And His mercy endures forever. And His mercy endures forever. Psalm number 136, one and following. Divine mercy truly saves. Ang magliligtas sa iyo ay ang awa ng Diyos. It is the mercy of God who will save us. Remember that, si Intercita, my dear devotees of Singapore, here in Hong Kong, there, let us remember, divine mercy truly saves. Lastly, St. Paul in second letter to Timothy tells us, that he has fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Chapter 4, verse 7. Don't lose your faith. Jesus assured us that he will always be with us. He listened to us, attends to our needs. Never will he abandon us, nor forsake us. So let us always have Jesus in our hearts, in our lives. Hold on to him and be steadfast with our faith. Be resilient, be courageous, and third, be steadfast with our faith. St. Faustina fulfilled to the letter everything Jesus commanded her. She did not miss what Jesus said and continued to follow him and apply his words in her life and for others. Our Lord assured her, my daughter, do not be afraid of what will happen to you. I will give you nothing beyond your strength. You know the power of my grace. Let it be enough for you. Diary 1, 4, 9, 1. My daughter, do not be afraid of what will happen to you. I will give you nothing beyond your strength. You know the power of my grace, and that is enough for you. You know the power of my mercy, and that is enough for us. St. Pausina spoke of God's mercy and shared his mercy. She lived God's mercy and led others to God's divine mercy. Our dearest devotees and disciples of divine mercy, Asia, there are those who attack and undermine our Catholic faith. They even ridiculed and made fun of our religious beliefs. 
they insulted and dishonor our God. God cannot be mocked. Saint Faustina heard an interior voice which said, My mercy does not want this, but justice demands it. Diary number 20. My mercy does not want it, but justice demands it. Let us all persevere with our faith. Let us be patient with them. We resort to prayers and remain polite. Yet let us be firm and faithful, even fearless to speak out and to show our Catholic faith. To them and for them, we think of mercy, we speak of mercy, and we do mercy. And that is what we are. Remember, that is who we are. To them and for them, we think of mercy, we speak of mercy, and we do mercy. We follow what the Lord Jesus implores of us, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Luke chapter 6, verse 36. An overseas Filipino worker who lived and worked for almost 14 years in Rome came to see her chaplain. She wanted to ask for his blessing and to offer Holy Mass. She was about to return home for good. Lourdes, the overseas Filipina worker, informed the priest that her children graduated and fully employed. They asked her, Mama, umuwi na po kayo sa amin. Nagbunga na po ang inyong pagpapakasakit para sa amin. Tapos na po ang paghihirap ninyo diyan. Kami naman po ngayon ang mag-aalaga sa inyo. Mama, please come home. Your sacrifices for us bear fruits. We have successfully attained our college degree and have stable jobs and steady income. We will be now the one to take care of you. Recalling her sacrifices and sufferings, how she surpassed all those things, Lourdes admitted to the priest, God is truly merciful. Padre, may awa talaga ang Diyos. Padre, may awa talaga ang Diyos. Father, God is truly merciful. And now with the successes of her children, and they were all saved through the years, Lourdes credited and acknowledged everything because of God's mercy. Sa awa ng Diyos. Sa awa ng Diyos. She credited and acknowledged that everything is because of God's mercy. My dear devotees and disciples of Divine Mercy Asia, my dear people of God here in Hermosa, have you asked yourselves, what are we going to do and to tell our people, especially in this time of COVID-19 pandemic and with the calamities? Remind them that Jesus is divine mercy. Divine mercy is Jesus. And like what Saint Faustina lived, let us all 
be resilient, be courageous, be steadfast with our faith. And we now say, Jesus, I trust in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, our eternal rock, our strong support in times of danger and difficulties. May he come to our help with his mighty strength. Let your response be, Lord, be our rock and our salvation. Lord, be our rock and our salvation. May the community of the God people listen to the God word and act on it so that the members may be withstand life trials and tempests. We pray. Lord, be our rock and our salvation. May church leaders faithfully govern the people entrusted to them and build up the community. We pray, Lord, be our rock and our salvation. May the government leaders lay aside selfish desire and petty grievances and instead focus on the best interests of the people. Through humility, love, may they lead us to peace and unity. We pray. Lord, be our rock and our salvation. May our Advent longing for Christ find us watchful in prayer and active in words of charity, we pray. Lord, be our rock and our salvation. That the prayers of thanksgiving from other brother and sister, especially Gino and Carol and family, Jason and Yuprasio Mercado and family, John Arvin Salupesa, John Patrick Salupesa will be accepted by the God and bring more blessing to them and to their loved ones. We pray. Lord, be our rock and our salvation. That the prayer requests of our brother and sister, especially Jason and Reprosio Mercado and family, Gino and Carol and family, Elizabeth Salupesa and family will grant the fulfillment of God according to his divine will. We pray. Lord, be our rock and our salvation. That the brother and sister who pass away, especially Mercedes Oliver, Victor Consonhi, Predes Vida Consonhi, David Consonhi, Rebecca Consonhi, Arnold Agustin, John Jorge, Cesar at Josepina Jorge, Mariano at Beatriz Agustin, Ruby Jen Ahuner, Antonio Pathai, those who has passed away because of the COVID-19, the souls of the aborted child, the souls in the purgatory will be accepted by the God in his glorious kingdom, we pray. Lord, be our rock and our salvation. O oh God, show the power of your protections over your people that sustained by your merciful help, they may hold fast to what is of lasting value through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that by sacrificing yours may be acceptable to God, to Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gather from among your gifts to us, what may you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below. Gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew Paul, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly this passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave this disciple, saying, Take this out of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Roberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory in our shores now and forever. With faith and love, let us call to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this mystery, so Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amidst passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. His Excellency Most Reverend Ruperto C. Santos, Reverend Fathers and Reverend Sisters, devotees of the Divine Mercy, and Sister Cynthia, and also the parishioners of St. Jan Paul II Shrine Parish, Good evening and welcome to the Diocesan Shrine and Parish of St. John Paul II. Pope John Paul II is known as the Pope of the Divine Mercy. We can say that the devotion to the Divine Mercy was a legacy of Pope John Paul II. In, in, in his entire papacy, he shown to the world his deep devotion to the Divine Mercy. In year 2002, the Pope entrusted the whole world to the Divine Mercy when he consecrated the International Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Krakow, Poland. This is where St. Faustina's mortal remains are entombed. The saint lived in the convent nearby. The Pope himself remembers as a young man working in a quarry just a few meters from the present-day shrine. He also says that he had been thinking about Sister Faustina for a long time when he wrote his encyclical letter on the Divine Mercy. Further, the Holy Father has frequently quoted from the, from the diary of St. Faustina Kowalska and prayed the chaplet of the Divine Mercy at the saint's tomb. This evening, we are gathered not just to remember and celebrate the legacy of Pope John Paul II, but to thank God for his infinite love and mercy. Once again, welcome to the Diocesan Shrine and Parish of St. John Paul II, and thank you. Maraming maraming salamat po. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is over. Let us go to speak. Thanks. To share and to do mercy to our people. Thanks be to God.
Divine Mercy Apostolate is would like to thank our presider for our illness, Most Reverend Roberto C. Santos, D.D., Bishop of Balanga, and C.B. City Permanent Council member. We would like to thank you for your presence in today's Eucharistic celebration. And the challenge for us is to always think of mercy, to always speak of mercy, and always do acts of mercy. Let go and let God and continue to live the spirituality given to us by St. Faustina. Ask for God's mercy, be merciful, and completely trust in the mercy of God. Thank you for your presence and active participation and collaboration in our regular Healing Mass, online Healing Mass. God bless us all. Together with our lay coordinator in Asia, St. Jelowardy, we would like to express our gratitude. God bless us all. Okay, Cynthia, thank you. Thank you, Father Frost. <laughs> Beautiful message for Bishop Santos sent to all of us. Thank you. We'll see you again, Father. Thank you for everyone. See you, you. again. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Thank you for sharing with me. Yeah, so beautiful, huh? Very mm. beautiful. Yeah. Father, this uh, Mrs. Dillon just baptized in Catholic Church, the one you talked to her, remember? Yes, yes. congratulations. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. with you always. Amen, amen. And be with you also. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we end our video right now, our Zoom. Thank you so much, Father. Thanks to the participants. And tomorrow, we have also our Mass, again, mm -hmm. by Bishop Santos for the Philippines, online Mass. Ah, I see. Yes, and seven. tomorrow, yes. you can send, send us the link, Father. Okay, okay, I will send it to you. All right, thank you. We see it on YouTube, Father? Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I will send to you, um, Your sister. Thank you. Yeah, I will send to you. See you again. Bye. Bye again. Bye bye, everyone. Bye.